Hi, this is Michelle from Tool Farm, and I'm also co-author of the just released book called Green Screen Made Easy with Jeremy Hankey. And the book is now available at Amazon.com and at MWP.com. And it's pretty much all new content, so please check it out. One of the plugins that I didn't cover in the book is called Hawaii Keyer, and this is three that was just released. I'm also doing this ongoing in-depth series on keyers for Tool Farm, so I thought I would combine a little promotion of the book into an in-depth video. So Hawaii Keyer is impressive. It's not as intuitive as some of the other keyers, but uh, once I watched a tutorial and saw how it works, I was blown away. It works on FX Factory technology. And uh, so that means it's Mac only. It works in After Effects, which I'll be showing you today. And uh, Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro in Motion. It works pretty much the same in all of the hosts. It's only $99, which is really inexpensive. So I'm gonna walk you through how it works and how quickly it works. And I think that you will be impressed. So uh, without further ado, here we go. All right, so here I have this footage. This is from hollywoodfilmwork.com where you can download all sorts of green screen footage for testing software or just learning new keying skills. And uh, this is a great clip to use because we have our hair blowing and we also have the sheer fabric. And sheer fabric is, of course, very difficult to key. I uh, have the Hawaii Keyer 3 here and I have two options, a blue or a green. And clearly here we're using green, so I'm going to drag the keyer on top of my footage and you notice right away it does a pretty amazing job at pulling out everything. It does look really really good but if I take a look at the mat you can see that instead of being a black and white cutout this is a gray and white cutout. Now Hawaii Keyer has several options for viewing your mat. If I click on analysis you can see this orange and purple uh, sort of mat and uh, this, this will give you a really good idea of what's being cut out and what's not being uh, removed. So you have your purple here, which you want to make this black, and then any areas in the center here that are yellow, you want them to be orange. So what you really want here is orange and black. And to adjust that, you go under the density settings. So I'm going to adjust the high settings here and just tweak this a little bit. With any keying software, you want to use a light touch. So I'm going to keep a little bit in the corners here because I may need to adjust something later. And I also want to adjust the foreground fill to fill in these areas of yellow here. I'm going to hold down the command key as I scrub here over top of it so that I can get little minute increments here. If I don't have that down, it would zoom really, really fast. So I do have some yellow here. Uh, I just do want to be careful to not overdo it. Um, so I'm going to uh, turn those back on here. Uh, I want to go over a few things with the views here. I have two views that I can use. Right now I'm just doing one view. If I want to use both, I just click dual view. What you're seeing here now is the Luma map. And the Luma map, um, it's explained very well in the tutorials online. It depends on if your background is red or blue, as I understand and that will let you know if you need to adjust the low or the high under density. You can view other things under the views as well. I have the final key here. I can look at the mat, for example, or the outer mat, which is sort of like a uh, like you would use with a garbage mat. Notice I didn't put a garbage mat on this footage like I normally would. Um, if I normally am keying something, what I would do is break it up into multiple mats as well. I would have a core mat and I would have a, a mat for the hair and another mat for you know skin or whatever depending on the footage. And uh, I'm not doing that with this one. I'm just showing you basically how to use it. That's uh, There's a couple of tutorials. I've done uh, a tutorial on a multi-mat technique using key light that you can check out. So uh, let me turn off dual view for now, and I'm going to go back to the mat here. You can see you have a pretty nice black and white cutout. There's a few little areas that are spotty, and that can be fixed under mat. Um, I can clip the white and clip the black just a little bit, or what I can do is use the mat cleaner. And if I check mat cleaner, I can view the amount here, and um, I'm just turning that up just a little bit, and that's getting rid of these holes here. And otherwise, I think it looks pretty good. Again, I don't want to overdo it. 
Um, maybe I want to turn it down just a little bit and I can adjust the fill holes. All right, I want to keep nice detail in the hair and not go too far in there. So uh, I can look at the outer mat, for example, and that's turned off. This is the one I showed you just a moment ago. Um, if it's turned off here, so you're not seeing it, um, but I can expand it. For example, if your hair is getting lost here, maybe you do want it to expand it a little bit. Now this is called the spill map overlay. And uh, you can see the areas where the skin, where it's picking up spill. So I can go under despill, and I have all of these adjustments. I can adjust the spill mat depth and you can see how that affects it. And that will cover more areas of the skin where it's picking up spill. Now the spill is automatically calculated and it's calculated after the key, which is good because you're not pulling stuff off of your... I'm going to put this to spill map. And this is a little different. It's just another way to look at it. Here's the despill so you can see the effect on it. I think it does a pretty good job on its own. So I'm gonna leave the settings as is. The next thing we can look at is the light wrap. Here when I set it to light wrap, you're not seeing anything because I don't have a background selected. So under background, I'm going to choose my background layer, which uh, this is a clip from Pond5, by the way. You can see it right there, waterfall. When, when I set this back to final key, you can see it a little bit better if I toggle it on and off. So it's more of a personal preference, what you feel looks best. You can adjust the blend mode here to something else as well, to multiply, for example. This is a great place to use that dual setting here. I'm going to set final key up in one and light wrap on the other and click dual view. I have a look there. Um, one thing I haven't gone over yet is white balance. Now this works extremely well. Now I don't really have a solid white on her image, so I'm going to go for her skin instead. So I can take this eyedropper and select an area of her skin and then set this to skin and then click image and you can see what a huge difference that makes. It may be too blue, but I think it looks pretty nice with the background here. I can adjust the amount, if it's too strong, and I can boost the gamma. It's subtle, you kind of have to crank that up a bit. Uh, I'm going to just uh, leave that to the default. And then under color, nothing happens unless it's enabled. So I can adjust the saturation here. I can take her down to black and white and give her an interesting look there. I'm going to set this back to the default here, but I can also adjust the high, mids, and lows to completely tweak the color. I'm going to leave it where it is for now, though, because I think you get the idea. Here is the final result. Um, I did a little bit more tweaking here. I'm really impressed with Hawaii Key Keyer 3.0, and I would highly recommend it for keying work, especially if you just don't have a lot of time to spend setting up a keyer. This went really, really fast, and it was really easy to use once I learned how to use the analysis and all that. I would recommend you pick up Hawaii Keyer. We have it at toolfarm.com. Also, check out my book, Green Screen Made Easy, and it is available now. Thank you so much for watching.